Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Lee. You're watching Dark Roots Creations, and this is my quarter three review of my 2022 goals. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm going to um, kind of like insert clips from my quarter two um, video and then kind of piggyback off that and give an update on what's happened since then. So I just feel like that'll be easier because instead of like pulling all that old information off if I already have it on a video anyway. So that's just how we're going to do it for this time. So let's get into all of the goals and what I've done so far. So first let's just get it out of the way. Um, my first goal was to read a quarterly classic that didn't happen at all. I actually read two classics, children classics, that weren't part of the list that I had. This was a total fail because I didn't read anything else and I'm not planning to read anything else. So lesson learned, no more classics for next year. Next, I have my favorite authors that I've read their backlist and I'm now up to the current books that they're publishing. And of the five authors, all five of them put out books in 2022. So first up is Mary Kay Andrews, and she put out The Homewreckers. I did read this already and gave it five stars. Next is Ellen Hildebrand with The Hotel Nantucket. I read that in June and I gave that five stars. Next is Colleen Hoover, Reminders of Him, which came out earlier this year. I just have not gotten to it. I will have it done though, probably before the end of the summer. Next. So I didn't get Reminders of Him read during the summer, but I did finish it in September. Gave it five stars, absolutely loved it. Also, since the year has started, Ellen Hildebrand has put out another book this is Endless Summers, and this is a bunch of short stories to go along with her other books. So I will absolutely be getting to that one. They're going to be quick. I love Ellen Hildebrand, so that's going to happen. And uh, who else put out another one? Oh, Colleen Hoover. Um, it actually comes out in October, and it's, start in, and it's called It Starts With Us, which is the second book in the It Ends With Us series, and this is a story about Atlas. So I'm not gonna hold off on it. I'm gonna get this one done because I really wanna have like this whole goal of favorite authors completed by the end of the year. Next is Riley Sager, and this was The House Across the Lake, which I did read just a few days ago. Unfortunately, this was a miss for me. I gave it two and a half stars possibly three because I was interested up until the twist. Um, not for me. Moving on. And then the last author that I need to read is Simone St. James and that is the book of cold case files or the book the book of cold cases. And Still haven't gotten to the Simone St. James book yet. S uh, I did download it onto Audible so I mean, like, now's the time I need to get to it. And kind of with October coming up, it seems like this would be the perfect time to read it. I have a goal to read at least one thriller every month. So far, I have kept up with that. And let's go down that list. So in January, I read The Therapist by B.A. Paris. February was The New Husband by D.J. Palmer. March was The Night Shift by Alex Finley. In April, I read Bullied by Andrea M. Long. In May, it was The Arrangement by Robin Harding. And in June, it was The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. With the exception of the Riley Sager book, I have really enjoyed all of the thrillers I've read so far this year. And like I said, in July, I plan on reading the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I'm actually currently also reading a thriller, The Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins, so I could count that one too, but I really need to get to the Simone St. James for that other goal as well. Next up was to read or remove books I put on my Goodreads TBR in 2020. 
Um, I don't really remember what I did um, for quarter one, so I'll just go over really quick. Um, I have a book, Good Girls Lie. I have not gotten to that one yet. There was Odd and True, which I removed from the list. Hard Rain, which I have not gotten to yet. That is a possible take off the list. I'm not 100% sure. Um, the New Girl, uh, The New Girl, The New Husband by DJ Palmer, read that one. Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell, I have not gotten to that one yet. Bully by Andrea M. Long, I read that one. The Inheritance Game series, I have not gotten to that yet. Um, a year-round Christmas mystery series, I removed that from the list. And The Arrangement by Robin Harding, which I already read. I actually just realized I have a book for Dead Queens that um, is not on here, but I know it's on my TBR and I have the book. I've just never gotten to it. I think I was super confident when I made this list that I was going to read the book that month. So I need to add that one on here, but that is another one as well. I'm glad I went over this list because I totally forgot about that one. Okay, so for the books for my 2020 TBR, um, I still have not read Four Dead Queens. I still have not read Good Girls Lie. I've taken Hard Rain off of the list. Invisible Girl I still have not gotten to. However, I did finish the Inheritance Games trilogy um, and I really enjoyed it. I actually just finished it today. So I'm happy to knock those three off and at least knock something in this category off. So for this next um, next quarter, this is really going to be like, you know, put up or shut up, read them or take them off. So we'll see how that goes. So next up is part one of four of my SAS list. SAS is serious about series in which we are trying to um, complete, make progress or start on any series that we've been wanting to get to. So for the first part, I wanted to read 22 and the reason for 22 is it's the year 2022. So that was kind of a theme of the SAS list. So I wanted to read 22 books by Kathy Daly. I am currently working on her three Bay series. There is the resort at Castaway Bay, the inn at Holiday Bay, and something at Gooseberry Bay, which I don't remember right now. I was trying to focus mostly on the Inn at Holiday Bay because I had not started this series in the by the beginning of the year. So at that time, there were 18 books out, so I put the 18 on the list. And then for the other four spots, I chose four books from the other Bay series that I needed to read at the time. So up until now for the um, Inn at Holiday Bay, I've read eight books and I've completed the other four books. So I have 10 spots left that I need to fill for the year. So for the In at Holiday Bay, I had finished eight and I have since then finished nine, 10, 11, and 12. So I have 13 through 18 on my list still to read and I have them all downloaded onto Audible. They're pretty short, so I'm very confident I will get them all done. My SAS list number two was my non-cozy because all of the Kathy Daly books are cozy mysteries. This, uh, this section is gonna be my non-cozy series. And for this one, I was gonna pick 22 books and uh, they were gonna be, for me, they were gonna be wrapping up different series. And within that, that would equal 22 books. I have since uh, made a few changes to this list. So let's try to go over it as, easy as possible here. So my first goal was to finish the Greenbone Saga by Fonda Lee. I had read the first one, Jade City. I had to read Jade War and Jade Legacy, finish both of those. Great trilogy. I absolutely recommend it for anybody who likes a kind of um, Asian inspired gang mafia fantasy type of book. I know that's like all over the place, but it really worked and I loved it. Next was the Gallagher Girls series by Allie Carter. Uh, there were six books altogether. Nope, six and a half books altogether. Two were novellas. 
I absolutely loved this series. I really wish she would write more. They're so good. Then I went right on to another Allie Carter kick and she has uh, so far a duology called the Winterborn series. I completed both of those books. Next was the Winter House series by Ben Gutterson. I had read the first book, so I needed to read the second too. I got those done. That wrap, wrapped up really nicely. Enjoyed that series as well. Next is the Inheritance Game trilogy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Again, as I stated, I did finish the Inheritance Games trilogy as of today. So uh, that's another one that got checked off of this SAS list as well which worked out perfectly because I wanted to read the rest of the books in the Noodle Shop series by Vivian Chen. Conveniently, there's five books left in that series that I need to read that are out so far. So I already read the first one, Wonton Terror, well, number four, Wonton Terror. I'm currently in the middle of number five and I already have six, seven, and eight. Okay, as far as the Noodle Shop goes, I have read Finished Egg Drop Dead, I finished Killer Kung Pao, so I have left number seven and eight, which is Fatal Fried Rice and Hot and Sour Suspects. Um, confident this is gonna get done, so I'm actually planning on reading Fatal Fried Rice in October. The uh, cover fits a prompt for the Killing Time with Cozy's Cozy Halloween Challenge. Okay, so for my, so that was like my, my two lists to make the 20 in 2022. And then I was picking two authors for 22. Um, and so I picked, I decided to pick two authors, Nora Roberts and read all of her books, her standalones published in 1983 and 1984, which I did accomplish in February. So that was done in quarter one. And so the other author I picked was Debbie Maycomer, and my goal was to read her Cedar Cove series. Um, that worked out perfectly for the month of July because Storm at Storm Reads and Sarah at the Bookish Knitter are doing a retro readathon summer edition, and uh, this series is going to go on that list. So in July, my goal is to get all 14 of these books done. We'll see how far I go, but I have them all, and I am planning to just go full force with this series. I kind of binged in February in the first retro romance readathon, I binged through the Nora Roberts. So I'm using this as like, this is the sign, get these done. Oh, how confident I looked back then thinking I was gonna binge through the Cedar Cove series. <laughs> these are a bit longer. They're a little bit more involved, at least for me. So as of this point, I have read four of the series. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't know how how much of this actual goal is going to get done this year. Um, I'm hoping I can still push through. I see there's a couple Christmas books on here. We'll see how it goes. This is the only goal left that I'm a little bit hesitant. Like, I don't know if this is going to happen. Another challenge was the Killing Time with Cozy's ABC challenge. For this, you could pick Cozy Mysteries or Non-Cozy Mysteries or do two separate lists. I chose to do the Cozy Mystery ones just because I read a bunch of other genres as well. And I thought because this is a Cozy Mystery group, I should stick to that plan and read Cozy Mysteries. So the goal here is to read a book that's tight that the title starts with each letter of the alphabet. So let's see where I'm at with that. Okay, at this point in time, I still have D, V, Y, and Z to get to. I do have books planned for all of these, so hopefully it'll just be banging them out and getting these last four done. I actually was thinking I was going to get these done a lot sooner, but, you know, I got involved in other things, so I'm confident in the next three months I can get these four done. Next was to start some fantasy reads and I was choosing to read a Robin Hobb book and a Brandon Sanderson book. Okay so I did read a Brandon Sanderson. This was a short story called The Original and this was by Brandon Sanderson and Mary Robinette Kowal. Um, wasn't a huge fan of it um, I'm just taking this as like the check mark that I read of Brandon Sanderson. 
I still have Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb to go. I'm hoping that it gets done for this year. So we'll see how that one goes. That's another one that I'm feeling a little bit iffy about. Um, so we'll see how that goes. And the last goal was just kind of more of like a, a booktube type of goal. It wasn't really good reads or reading related necessarily, but I wanted to do six readathons throughout the year. I was going to do one every other month. In January, I did the Mary Poppins readathon. In March, I did the Goodfellas readathon. Rest in peace, Ray Liotta. In May, I did the National Lampoon Summer Vacation. And for July, we are doing the Jaws readathon. So I've been pretty, very grateful and blessed that a lot of people have participated in these and I've had um, good responses. So thank you all for um, participating or letting other people know about it. I really appreciate that. So thank you very much for that. Okay, so I got to my fifth readathon in September, and that was a Footloose readathon. And I already have planned out the one for November, so stay tuned for that announcement video. Okay, so that is the wrap up to my goals so far this year. I think I'm doing pretty good. I don't have, I don't want to say I don't have a lot more to go in some areas I'm super confident in other ones not so much so I am going to spend the next three months though really pushing really focusing just trying to get these done anything else I'm participating in I'm a participating minimally and b trying to limit the amount of things that I participate in I still want to support other people but I really want to hit these goals as well so we'll see how it goes <laughs> Anyway, how are you guys doing with your goals? How's your SAS list coming? How are your uh, Goodreads challenges going? Anything else that you planned for yourself? How is it going so far? And do you think that you will complete them by the end of the year? Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I look forward to telling you at the end of the year how far I got with these goals, if I completed them all. and. Just looking also forward to 2023 because I love to set new goals all the time. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.